Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today we're gonna to make a new quilt. I've sketched out the pattern here. This is gonna be made from half square rectangles and it makes big diamonds. I've written the pattern so it will work with quarter yards or fat quarters or a layer cake. And that's what I'm gonna to use today is this nice layer cake. This layer cake is called Vive La France. It's a French general collection and it has a nice mix of light and dark prints. And that's what we need for this pattern. We need about half lights and half darks. So I'm gonna go ahead and separate them right now into two stacks, darks here and lights here. I've got a total of 16 darks. There happen to be some reds, some navies, and some slate blues, and I've got 16 lights. So 16 of each, and they're all gonna get cut exactly the same. They're all gonna get cut to five by eight inches. I've got six layers here because I'm comfortable cutting that. And I'm going to cut this down to eight inches. So I am going to cut an inch off of each side. If you want, you could cut two inches off of one side, then you would have a bigger piece instead of these little scraps. But I like to get those pinked edges cut off if at all possible. So now I've got eight inches wide and I'm just gonna turn it around and I'm gonna cut it right down the middle and I will have five inches here. I will have two pieces that are five by eight from each one. So that's all the cutting we have to do and I'm gonna do that to all the rest of the layer cakes. Now we're ready to make some blocks. So we are going to take two lights. We'll get two different lights here and we'll get two darks and I'm gonna use two different reds and we're going to mark the back of the blocks. We need to mark one half inch in from two opposite corners. And the easiest way to do it is if you have a mat that has half inches marked here. So I'm gonna put this on these lines and then I'm just gonna eye up where that half inch is and I'm gonna make a big pencil dot. And then I'm gonna make one on the opposite corner. Now the other light one, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm going to do it in the opposite corner. So I'm gonna to go to the upper left here and the lower right. So they're marked in opposite directions now, with one this way and one this way. I'm gonna do the same thing to these red ones. So I've got them in pairs now. I've got a light and a dark and a light and a dark. Now just on the light fabric, we are going to wanna to draw a line to connect the dots. Now, take these two pairs, a dark and a light. They both have dots going the same directions. So let's put this one right side up and this one right side down. Now we can't stitch it like this because we won't get two rectangles. But if you take these opposite corners and turn them and then stick a pin through this dot and make sure it comes through your dot on the back there. And we'll pin that in place and we'll do the same thing in the opposite corner right through the dot and then make sure it's going through the dot on that back side. Smooth it out, pin it in place. So we'll do that with the other one here. Now this one will be going the opposite direction. So put them right sides together and then just turn it and pin it using the same method. Then we'll go over to the sewing machine. Now we're going to stitch one quarter inch away from this line on each side. So I'm gonna carefully take that pin out Hold everything in place one quarter inch away. Spin it around. Same thing on the other side. I've got a few of the blocks done here. So the next step is to cut these right along that line that we drew. So we're going to cut it. I'm gonna use my blade And then we'll take these over and iron them and we will have rectangles. To iron these, start with the light print on the bottom and fold this open. That makes the seam allowance go towards the dark. Press it with your hands first so that you don't get that distorted. You want a nice straight line there. And then we're just going to trim off those little dog ears. To make our big diamond, 
we're going to use four different red prints here. And so we're going to put them together. So that will be for what block one, we'll set that aside. That will go there, that'll go over there, that will go there, and that will go there. So I like them with four different prints. You can, if you want to repeat a print, you can just do it like that. But I think it's a little more interesting with four different prints. Now we're going to sew these together. So I'm going to do these seams first. So I'm just going to put that right sides together and that right sides together. I'm going to use a quarter inch seam here. I like to leave that one on the machine and then grab the other pair and start stitching. Now we're gonna finger press these in opposite directions. So we'll go to the right on this one and then we'll make this one go to the left. Now we want to sew this last short seam here. When you sew this seam, you need to do a larger than a quarter inch seam. Not three eighths, but close to three eighths. Kind of in the middle between a quarter and three eighths. Just a little bit bigger. If you don't do that, you won't have enough seam allowance left over here. I'll show you. This is what I'm talking about. If you use a quarter inch seam, this ends up too close to the edge, and then when you connect your blocks, you will be cutting that off a little bit. So just do it a little bit bigger than a quarter inch, and you can, you can adjust as you go. You can see, you wanna make sure you've got a good quarter inch left there. So I'm gonna take the rest of my pieces, and I am going to use that same method and make a lot more blocks. I've got all 16 blocks done. So I'm gonna make a four by four block quilt. It won't be square because these blocks are rectangular. So I'm just going to lay them out and try to balance the colors and mix it up. Now the whole quilt is laid out and because I ironed every block with the seam allowances going the same way, I turned every other one when I laid the quilt out. So now this seam allowance is going up but this seam allowance is going down. So when we stitch this together, those seam allowances will nest. And the same thing will happen here. This is going down, that's going up. So throughout the whole quilt, it'll be really easy to stitch these into rows and to stitch the rows together. I've got the top done, so let's go pick out some borders. I'm gonna use two darker, narrow borders on this. The patchwork's kind of big, so I think the balance with smaller borders will look really good. I'm going to use two of the darker fabrics from in the patchwork here. I'm going to use this almost solid blue one here. It's in the French General line. And here it is right here. This will frame all of that patchwork very nicely. Then I'm going to want to go with something with a little more print. That one should look really good. Now, before I put the borders on, I'm going to take the extra squares, the extra layers that we had left, and I'm going to make some patchwork cornerstones. All I'm going to do is cut up some two inch squares. Now I'm just going to take 16 squares and I'm going to put them in a four by four block patchwork and then stitch that all together. So I'm just going to pick up these first two pieces and sew them together and leave it on the machine. Then I'm going to pick up the next two pieces and sew them on. And I'm going to keep going down that first row. Then I will just add the rest of the pieces and stitch all the rows together. Here are the little cornerstones. Now these are going to go in every corner of the whole quilt. And the last thing we need to do is to figure out how long are we gonna cut these borders? They're both gonna be exactly the same length and they're both gonna be exactly the same length as the quilt. So you want to measure your quilt so that you know exactly how to make those borders. So I'm gonna smooth it out, not stretch it, just smooth it out. And mine is about 32 and three quarters inches. And you might wanna measure it in a couple of different spots because sometimes it'll be a little wider in some spot than another. So measure it both ways. 
and we'll write that down. So my length here is 48, 58, 57 and a half. And I'm going to measure it again. And if I come up with a different length, then I'm just going to average those two lengths together. Those are the same, so we're good. Now, the cornerstones have a finished size of six inches. So that's how wide we need to make our borders. So I'm going to cut each one of these three and a half inches. That'll be a finished size of six inches, and they will fit exactly the same width as the cornerstones. I have the quilt on the machine, and I really think this one will look best with a neutral color of thread. I don't want the thread to show, so any of these will work. This matches the background, but this one is slightly darker, and it'll look better on the blue and red, and this one I think is just a little bit too dark, so we'll go with this one. I've chosen a quilting pattern called Luna. It has nice swirls and it's soft, and I think that that pattern will look really good against the big diamonds that are in the quilt. Now we can see those big patchwork diamonds. I've got the red ones lined up and then here and here just to give it balance. It was pretty easy to make. It's a small quilt. It's about 44 by 69. We've got the pattern so that you can print it off. Now I only used one layer cake. If you use two, you'll get a nice throw size. You'd need three for a queen. And we just used a half a yard for this border, half a yard for this border, and half a yard for the binding. Very easy. You can't really see the quilting on the back here. It's just a nice overall pattern, but you can see a little bit of it on the top. I love the little swirls. Lots of fun to make. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make the diamonds quilt. Now we're having another giveaway. We are going to give away two of these really nice star wall hangings. They're really fun to make, but it's even more fun if you win one. So we've got this nice fall colored one and then we've got another richer one made with Ginny Buyer fabrics. It's very easy to enter. Just click the link below that says giveaway and enter your name and email address. And this is open to everyone worldwide. Good luck. Now, if you don't wanna miss any of our upcoming tutorials, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy quilting.